Do you find yourself agreeing to things from people that tell a great story? Stories are nothing new, but in a world that is wired, we are yearning for that personal connection, aren't we? We want more entertainment, more action, more inspiration. And you, as the storyteller, can be the source of that. You can be the person holding everyone's attention and moving from consuming to doing, buying, signing, whatever you want them to do. All you have to do is take on the challenge to become a better storyteller in business and at home. Once you start sharing your knowledge through stories, it gets easier and naturally your stories will get better and better. The Expert Speak English podcast is a corporate communication podcast designed specifically for non-native speaking experts who deserve to be recognized for a rewarding and inspiring career. Each show includes a communication challenge to activate your knowledge. So welcome to the show. And if you love it, then please give me some sparkle with some gold stars and a rating. Hi there. I'm Corinne Wilhelm, and I'm on a mission to help professional problem solvers to become better communicators, because that's what will get you recognised as the English-speaking expert in your organisation and in your industry, internationally. So, how do you find stories? Well, it all starts with keeping it real and relatable. Now, my dad is a real character and a notorious tall storyteller. That's quite difficult to say. Oh, you might ask, what's a tall story, Corin? Well, I will tell you. A tall story is one of those stories that's been exaggerated, often like a really ridiculously exaggerated version of the truth. And, you know, as it unravels, it becomes increasingly obvious that this is just not true. It's like being blown way out of proportion. And actually, it was through these entertaining tall stories that he won the heart of my grandma. She loved him to bits. What you have to know is that she'd already lost a husband in the Second World War. She was certainly not excited to have a guy from Bremen marrying her daughter. His tall stories won her heart. So storytelling in business is an entertaining and approachable way to get your business partners, stakeholders and colleagues to shift gears from the logical to the emotional. And even though decisions are often justified with the facts, we all know, don't we, that decisions, they're driven by the heart, that gut feeling. Now, when I was growing up, I used to go to church and the priest at the time, his name was Father Burns. If you're listening, Father Burns, please get in touch. I'd love to know what you're up to. He was in his 40s at the time and everybody, everybody loved him. Why? Because he told great stories. You would understand, you would get it. And, you know, it wasn't just the story. But it was the message. You know, in a Catholic church, that gospel is all about living a Christian life in line with the Catholic values. But he did it in such a way. It was funny. It was entertaining. He'd throw his arms around. He'd pace around. He'd look at you in the eye. He'd pull you in with his story. You can use stories not just in novels, but to convince people to be persuasive. And that's the trick. Start with the goal in mind. That's particularly important in storytelling. So make it super clear what you want them to do next. Don't start with that, but make sure that's clear in your mind and tell them at the end. Tell them how to take action, because if you tell a good story, they'll already be motivated. They'll have bought in. You must tell them what to do. Don't expect them to work it out. They have to hear it from you. You, the storyteller. You, the expert. 
And if you like acronyms, you might like to use the STAR acronym for sharing your story in an intriguing way. Set the situation. T is for describing your task and involvement. A, you have to give them some juicy details about your action. And R is to explain the results and their impact. Or another popular one is attention, interest, desire and action. Having said that, don't get too tied down by structure. Have some fun with it. Now, storytelling is made out of two parts. The story and the telling. It's not just the story, it's not just the telling. It's a beautiful combination of both. So when you're telling a story, share your passion. Use your tone of voice. Use pace. Go faster and slower. Draw them in. Put intrigue and excitement into your voice. And use simple but sensational words. Use words that people could understand. Use words that really draw them in. I'm thinking about things like adjectives and adverbs, but you can even make up your own words. Be creative. Have fun with it. Now, before I go on to tell you about what your audience needs to see, or at least imagine, to really understand your message and take action, I would like to share with you a cocktail-powered story for those of you based in Berlin and Potsdam. So as you know, I live in Berlin and many people associate Berlin with dirt and noise and things like that. But where I live, it's actually very beautiful with three lakes. So if I was to say to you, OK, should we do an English lesson or should we go for a cocktail? I'm pretty sure you'd go for the cocktail, right? <laughs> so actually, that's where I came up with the idea to combine my walk and talk program with a nice refreshing cocktail. Pimp your English is my walk and talk coaching solution for people that want to make a difference in their career, but they really struggle to find the time or the inspiration to do something, especially something active, after a demanding day at work. And they certainly find it difficult to find the time and inclination to work on their English. But they would actually quite like an opportunity to practice their English and to get some feedback from somebody like me who's a native speaker. So I decided to have a bit of fun with it. And I love cocktails, so why not join me with a fun colleague or friend who also wants more from their career? Bring a communication challenge with you that we can work on and we'll practice it as we walk. And then when we get back to our meeting point, I'll treat you both to a refreshing and well-deserved cocktail. So walk and talk coaching for two hours usually costs 300 euros, but all of my prices go up every August. So I have four more Pimp Your English sessions between now and the last session on the 7th of the 7th or 7th of July, when the school holidays start here in Berlin. I kind of disappear off the face of the earth for the holidays. So if you have something coming up at work where you want to make a professional impression in English, go to www.englishspeakingexperts.com backslash walk and talk, all one word. I wonder what kind of cocktail you'll choose as we sit with the view of the Vansy. So back to the storytelling. What they need to see and imagine. What I need you to do is, or what they need you to do is to draw them in. You need to set the scene. And it really helps to do this in the present tense. So instead of saying, when I was a little girl, try saying, we're at school. It's sixth grade. We've got these stupid school uniforms on. You get it? I'm much more drawn in to the second version. That present tense is really key for pulling people in. It puts them in the situation with you. And did you notice there was more attention to detail? I was giving you a really clear picture of where we are. Use adjectives and adverbs to provide the detail that draws them in. 
Now, I'm a real word nerd, so I can help you with this if you like, but try and be really descriptive about the situation. Every little detail makes the whole thing more convincing, more persuasive. And your audience role in the story, how does it affect them? Or how could it affect them? What are their hopes, their dreams, their fears? Make sure that that is part and parcel of your message. Tell a story they can relate to. I'd just like to summarise for you. Firstly, storytellers can shift the needle emotionally through intentional edutainment, education and entertainment. Start with your goal and deliver with your heart and soul. Number three, finish with a punchline. Bang! And a clear call to action. Tell them exactly what you want them to do and why it's important to do it now. So, with every episode, I have a communication challenge. Some people contacted me last week and they complained <laughs> that I didn't have a communication challenge, but I couldn't think of one around the Jubilee. So here we are this week to make up for it. I have a communication challenge for you. I want you to start logging your stories, stories that you tell other people, stories about mundane life stuff. Just keep a log of these stories. Get a little notebook, treat yourself to a new one. There's always an excuse to buy a new notebook and mark each one with hashtags or categories of what this situation, scenario, a story could help you to explain with personality and power. So a situation with your daughter at the supermarket could convey a message about something that you need to tell people. And be brave. Try it out. See if you can tell a story to convey a message. It can be to your kids. It can be to a colleague, whatever. And if you share it on social media, make sure that you include the hashtag experts speak English. Excellent. And next week, I'll be sharing with you some nuggets of knowledge about the power of persuasion. Now, this is something you simply have to learn in life. And I'll be giving you an irresistible challenge for that. So, like L'Oreal says, you're worth it. You need to get the best out of life, not just your career, but out of life in general. Learning to be persuasive it just means you're getting more out of life, running your life, not someone else's. Thank you so much for joining me. It's always a pleasure being here with you. And I look forward to speaking to you next week on the Experts Speak English podcast. Have a fabulous week and be the very best communicator that you can be. Take care now. It's Corinne Wilhelm. Goodbye. Thank you.